Hello friends! If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you are a subscriber or a fan, welcome back. Today's topic is World Religions Judaism 2. There's not much I have to say, so let's get right on into the video. It is not necessary to watch Judaism 1 to get the gist of Judaism 2. However, if you would like to know what scholars think about the Genesis through 2 Kings account, you may want to go and watch that first. According to the Genesis to 2 Kings account, Israel was led in worship by the priest tribe of the Levites. But is this true? In Judges, Micah the Ephraimite initially installs his son as priest in a sanctuary. Later, he replaces his son with a Levite. However, in this instance, Levite does not designate a genealogy since this supposed Levite was from the tribe of Judah. Remember in the last show on Judaism, I mentioned that there was an influx of people and uh, most of these people adopted the ways of the Canaanites, at least for the most part. Since the Israelites primarily came from within Canaan, it is unsurprising that there is continuity between Jewish and Canaanite practices. The two main deities of the Canaanites were El and Baal, whereas an inscription in Egypt tells us that Yahweh was a deity of the Bedouin from the Transjordan region. The names of the Bronze Age sanctuaries, including the name of Israel herself, indicates that the Jews' earliest ancestors worshipped El. According to texts dating from the 14th and 13th centuries BCE, El is the chief deity in the Syro-Palestinian pantheon. He is depicted as father of years and of humans and is a peace-loving God whose will operates the divine and human worlds, though he is sometimes harassed by lesser gods and goddesses. Baal is another Syro-Palestinian god who found worshippers among pre-monarchical Israelites. Baal was a dying and rising god, as well as god of vegetation and seasonal cycles. Yahweh, of course, emerged as the national god of Israel and Judah, yet even in monarchical times, Yahweh was not exclusively worshipped. For example, Yahwism and Baalism continued to coexist through much of Israel's history. Full disclosure, you can use the name Jehovah in the comments if you want to. But I despise the name, and not just because of what Jehovah stands for. Jehovah is not his name. Yahweh is his name. They didn't even exist back then. The origins of Yahwism are still a mystery. According to Exodus 6-3, Moses first encountered Yahweh in Midian, but Genesis 4-16 asserts that his worship dates back to the beginnings of the human race. Certain texts associate Yahweh with the South and refer to him coming from that direction to aid Israel in war. The spread and acceptance of Yahwism among the tribes was probably gradual, with local forms varying from place to place. Yahweh is strongly associated with warfare, and generally, it was times of war that the tribes joined together. In times of peace, the tribes would heavily depend on Baal for fertility. I think that's a good place to stop for today. 
Uh, like I said, my aim for this channel is not to point out how the Bible does not make sense. That's for other channels. But I will be pointing out some of how the Bible doesn't make sense simply because Judaism and Christianity use the Bible. If you like this kind of content, please hit the like button, press the subscribe button, and if you would like to no be notified when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. My Twitter, PayPal, Discord, and email links are in the description, as well as the sources that I use for this show. Question everything and never be afraid. Here are a couple of videos from my library. If you have not seen them, go ahead and see them. Tell me what you think. Leave comments in the comment section. I love hearing from you. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.